Hey everyone, this is Bethany and I want to thank you for joining me for Rooftops today. So like a couple weeks ago, we were at the mall and this store, it, it kind of stood out to us, got our attention. And so we went and checked it out and basically it was like an Amazon store. I think it's where like people you know, had returned items to Amazon and now they made a store out of it. And so there's all these like hodgepodge things everywhere, all sorts of things that are just kind of sitting out and displayed and it would take you quite a while to look through it. But then there was this section that was just made up of boxes and they're just like the brown boxes with tape, no label other than the price tag was on them. And so uh, you could choose one of these boxes for the price that was on the label, but you had no clue what was in the box, like none. It was a mystery. It was a guess. I, I guess you would call it like a mixed bag sort of thing, um, which personally I don't really love because when I spend my money, I like to know that I'm actually going to like what I'm going to get or that I could, you know, use it, that I need it for something. But with these boxes, you had to take your chance. Like you had to trust that something good, you're going to find something valuable in these boxes. Even if you had to, to sift through some bad things, sort through the junk, it, it was ultimately going to be uh, worth it because there was just something good in there that you were going to find. There was going to be a treasure. And I find that life is somewhat like this. Like it's just a mixed bag. Maybe you've noticed that too. Like it, the good, the bad, the ugly, it's just kind of all mixed together. And that's what makes up our life. And as I was reading in the Old Testament uh, a while back and, and really just reading about the patriarchs and the people of God, the, these early ones, when I read their stories, all I kept thinking about was like, wow, how twisted their lives were. Like just such a mixture of good and bad going on, all intertwined together. And I was thinking, man, if I had one word to describe their lives, it would be complicated. Like it's complicated. That's how I kind of viewed their lives. And I think, though, that that's why I enjoy reading uh, about the patriarchs and their, their lives, because it's like we get such an up-close, um, individual relationship with God that we get to view, that we get to kind of examine. And so not just not just the people of God, like collectively, but again, really as individuals, these first ones that were called. And these were the chosen ones. These were the ones that had covenant relationship with God. These are the ones that he gave the promises to. And, and so I love just like looking at their lives and seeing how it played out and how they lived and all their ups and all their downs, because really they went through so much in their lives. And when you read about some of their lives, like it is more intriguing uh, and captivating than reading a, uh, any novel or watching a soap opera. Like there is some drama happening. I, and the thing about it is though, is it, it it's real, it's real life, real life stories of just twists and turns all throughout their storylines. And no doubt, like for sure, they brought on some of their own pain. Um, their lives became twisted and complicated by their own dysfunction, their own dark tendencies. I mean, there was sin rampant. <laughs> there was lying and deceiving and and just hurting others in many ways, jealousy, rape, there's parents that are playing favorites, like all sorts of craziness going on in these early um, believers, like people that had faith in God. And yet at other times, they were the ones who were hurt. They, they didn't bring it upon themselves, but, um, they were hurt. They were, they were lied to, they were deceived. Um, they had struggle, they had tragedy. They, they went through, uh, suffering and just tasted hardship a lot of the times. And I just, I can't help but thinking again, like, wow, it's, it's, it's the righteous ones. It's God's very own people that sometimes go through so many things and yet the promises are theirs. The promises are ours. And I'm sure like us, um, at times they couldn't or didn't understand, couldn't fully comprehend like why, why they went through what they were going through. 
our all-powerful God, like our sovereign God, our good God. He was right there watching over them when they were experiencing all of these struggles. And he was even protecting them and guiding them and blessing them. Like, how could that <clears throat> exist together, right? And so for me anyways, it's, it is hard to fully comprehend God in a twisted life. Maybe you can relate to that because when I think of God, I, I just tend to think of perfection and that's absolutely true of him. He is perfect all the time, but my life is anything but perfect. Um, even when it's going good, it's still not perfect. And so how does this perfect God show up and just saturate himself in the scenes of my twisted and perfect life? I mean, when I think about it, it just sounds crazy, right? Like perfection in, in the center of imperfection. And so it kind of just hurts my brains. Like it, it blows my circuits, so to speak. And um, I've noticed for me, one of the things is I, I've always tried to like separate God from the imperfectness in life, separate him from mess. Because I, I guess somewhere in my mind, I just think, well, if, if, he's good and he's perfect and he's with me, then it should go good. It should go perfect, right? Like it should go smooth. We really shouldn't have to be facing a lot of uh, hiccups and experiencing anything wrong. Like if we're, if we're close, like if I'm close to God, if you're close to God, then, then why do we deal with some of the things that we deal with? Because again, just that mindset of like, okay, if something is going wrong, then I equate that to bad, like wrong is bad. And how can God be where it's bad and wrong? Because God's good and perfect. You know, I don't know if you ever have any, any thoughts like that, but you know, then I just remind myself, like, this is a fallen world and we're dealing with our flesh and we're dealing with a real enemy, the devil. But even more than all of that, I know that God is doing just something remarkably good, so much better than anything we're going through or um, just something so great, even when things aren't going our way, you know, because we have a way that we want things to go and then sometimes they end up going another way. And in all of this, God's fully engaged. Don't forget that. God is fully engaged, even though it seems sometimes like happenstance in our life when we face different things. God is God over every single bit of it. There's nothing too frivolous or unnoticed by him. And even though it's been hard for me sometimes to comprehend that, I've really come to the conclusion that we can be under God's protection and yet suffer at the same time. And I know that doesn't make sense logically to us at times, because again, we're thinking if God's with us and he can stop the struggle, if he can stop the suffering, then, then why doesn't he, right? But this is where faith comes in, where we choose to trust God and we believe that he is good and that there's purpose in our pain, that he's, he's working something out. And we know that God's got us and that he's still in control. And for me, it, it really takes the sting of fear out of it when I know that God is present, you know, that he's not far off, but he's definitely involved in my struggles and that he's working out his good plan and all my trouble, even in my twisted life. And again, we're fully protected, even in the times when we suffer, like we've got to know that surely our God never takes his eyes off of us, that he's big, that, that he is our father, that he's our protector, that he's guiding us, that, that you and I are the apple of his eye and that he will not, and he cannot ever forget about us. And we see this very thing demonstrated at the cross and, and everything that Jesus went through, a tremendous struggle and unimaginable suffering. And yet the father is right there allowing it to happen. Uh, it says about Jesus in Matthew 26, 39, and he went a little beyond them and fell on his face and prayed saying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me yet, not as I will, but as you will. And then in verse 42, he says, he went away again and a second time and prayed saying, my father, if this cannot pass away, unless I drink it, your will be done. So Jesus is praying here. We're seeing him praying and crying out to God and, and, and saying, if there's any other way to avoid this struggle, to avoid this pain. But the thing was, is there wasn't another way. And even when Jesus was praying, things didn't change. 
in that moment. But we know that God was still in control. It didn't mean that God was being unattentive um, by not intervening. And maybe someone needs to hear that today, that God's not ignoring you. He hasn't forgotten about you. It it also didn't mean that because it happened, it was God's fault, um, that he was the perpetrator, so to speak. God isn't out to harm us. He's out to bring good in our lives. He loves us and he wants the best for us. He has the best intentions for you and I. It also didn't mean that the father had some sick sense of enjoying Jesus suffer, that that it didn't mean much to him or, or that he didn't care, um, but rather he was grieving. He was grieving at what his son was going through. And it's the same for you and I, that God sees our tears and he hears our prayers and he knows the struggle that we're going through and he has great compassion on us. And when they showed up to arrest Jesus, His disciple, Peter, he's like ready to fight, right? And protect Jesus. But Jesus says this in Matthew 26, 53. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? And that's just it. I mean, sometimes bad things happen, but that doesn't equate that God is powerless or absent. It just means he has a greater plan that he's working out. Maybe you feel like you're alone, like God's forsaken you or left you. Even Jesus felt this way. He says in Matthew 27, 46, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? And we know the story. We know that Jesus went to the cross, that he paid the full price. And and, and because of that, we know that the Father didn't stop Jesus' pain or suffering or crucifixion or even kept him from dying because he had a greater cause in mind, you and me, our salvation. And thank God, because I think about this, and, and even though it, it sounds kind of twisted, like, aren't you so grateful that the Father didn't intervene and stop? Jesus's pain, that he didn't put a stop to the cross. Because if he would have done that, you and I would have a very different future. And if we could only see our suffering, our present struggles and pain in the same light that God is in control, even in the midst of them, and and knowing that because we're his children, he's going to do something great with our suffering. And so I was looking uh, recently at some tapestry, and if you're not sure what tapestry is, it's a fabric that's hand-woven. It's not just like auto-generated on a big machine, but it's it, it takes time. It's hand-woven, and it's usually created to depict a real detailed image or picture of something or someone, and um, it's to reflect something specific. It's not just a pattern. It's often characterized by complexity and richness. And yet, if you look at the backside of tapestry, the part that the weaver is actually weaving the threads together, it looks like a total jumbled mess. Like you can see imperfections everywhere. There's loose threads. It looks like not staying, just everywhere. Everything's going on. You can't tell what it is. And I think about how, man, that's how we sometimes look at ourselves, our lives. Like we can see all the imperfections. That's what we see. And it's so similar to us looking uh, at our lives and sometimes just being discouraged. Like, I don't see what you're doing, God. I don't see the clear picture here of, of what you're putting together. All I see are, are the mistakes and the failures and my missed opportunities. But God is working all these little loose threads together for our good. And he's weaving those loose threads together to make a beautiful work of art in us. And, and it's for his glory. And so again, when, when you turn the tapestry on one side, you see the mess. But when you flip it over, it is this beautiful, perfect masterpiece. And actually, we're going to put a picture up for you just to, to take a look at um, because when I saw this, I, I was looking at, at different tapestries. When I saw this, it was it was like really moving to me. It's just such a great picture of again sometimes how we see 
um, what we see and there's no logic to it. Like it just looks like a mess and yet God has a total different perspective. And so I find it to be encouraging and we can trust the weaver in our lives. So don't lose heart today. God's weaving every detail, every single detail of your life into a tapestry that depicts his goodness, his faithfulness, his power. And I was thinking, you know, about the tabernacle and, and just the great concern that God took in, in constructing the tabernacle, which was to be a place where his, his presence dwelt, like people could meet with him there and they could be forgiven of their sins there. And, and he put such detail into constructing this. And, and if you read through those passages, you'll even find tapestry in there. Like that's one of the things that, that was included in the tabernacle. And I think, man, if he cared so much and took such great detail in constructing his temple, do you think that he would do anything less in our life? Because we are his very temple of his indwelling presence. So be encouraged. You are God's masterpiece. And uh, one more thing I want to share with you as I was looking up uh, tapestry, I found a poem by Corey Ten Boom uh, that is just beautiful. So I want to leave you with this. It's called Life is But a Weaving. My life is but a weaving between my God and me. I cannot choose the colors. He weaveth steadily. Oft times he weaveth sorrow, and I in foolish pride Forget he sees the upper and I the underside. Not till the loom is silent and the shuttle cease to fly will God enroll the canvas and reveal the reason why. The dark threads are as needful in the weaver's skillful hand as the threads of gold and silver in the pattern he has planned. He knows, he loves, he cares. Nothing this truth can dim. He gives the very best to those who leave the choice to him. So that's my prayer for you today, that you let God just make that tapestry out of your life that reflects who he is and be encouraged, even if you can't see the picture of it yet yourself, that the the good father, the good weaver, he knows what he's doing and he is making you into his masterpiece. Thanks for joining me today on Rooftops. 